it's great You you can do this. You know? No, I'm really gonna do it. Uh, welcome to church this Wednesday. Uh, we're doing the announcements. Uh, Let's talk about Winter Extreme, okay? There's no spots left, first of all, so, but it's a lot of fun, and uh, I'm excited for everyone to come. And then here's Jacob. Uh, don't forget about small groups. Uh, Sunday afternoon at 4, you can get to find where your small group is at, go to fbcenterprise.info, and on to Brian. Yeah. Let's give a clap for Brian. <laughs> No, no, sorry. Garrett has been wanting to do announcements. Um, hey, I, I do wanna I do wanna point out a group of guys. So if you came, if you're one of the high school guys uh, that came to help with the new welcome dinner, stand up. Stand up. Let's give them a round of applause. It looks awesome. It looks awesome. All right. So uh, it's great to see everybody tonight. We're trying something new. Uh, it's parent night. Um, instead of doing a parent meeting after at 7 o'clock uh, and making you stay at church even longer, uh, we're going to start doing parent night at least twice a year on a normal Wednesday night at 6 o'clock, and we're just going to turn our uh, normal student worship service on Wednesday night into uh, into a, an informational meeting, but we're also going to do some scripture we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, so we really wanted to do that. Uh, so the some of you parents have probably never been up here before, uh, and if you have been up here, it's probably not been on a Wednesday night when we've been doing worship, so we wanted to invite you in as we to do. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to pray, and then uh, we're, all, we're all going to uh, stand up and prepare our hearts for worship. So everybody, bow your heads with me. God, thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity we have, Lord, to worship you, to honor and glorify you with all that we are and all that we do. I pray that worship tonight that we would focus on you, that corporately as a group that we would honor you with our voices. In your name I pray. Amen. If y'all stand with me tonight.
um, I just pray that Brian's words would be for me, Lord, and that we would just receive them into our lives. Um, we love you, and we pray this in your name. Amen. For all of the parents, uh, most of y'all probably don't know them. That was uh, Jonas and Sarah. They are our uh, Wednesday night worship leaders. Uh, they are students at Troy uh, that come down here on Wednesdays and lead worship for us. Um, uh, yeah, they're out. See you guys. Um, so, yeah, you like my picture. Uh, if you want to know one thing about me is I love Star Wars. Um, some of y'all know that. I've already gotten tickets to, to open night on the 15th. Um, we're going to be sitting in Y13 and Y14. Um, how many of y'all know they, they do reserve seats at the movie theater now? Do y'all know that? Like, you can buy the seat that you want ahead of time. Like, you don't have to show up and try and hunt, hunt and peck around to figure out where you're going to sit. So, um, on another note, my wife loves me. She brought me a Mountain Dew from work. Okay, shh, shh. That's, that's, that's okay, it's a Mountain Dew, I love that. Um, so I wanted to, want to start and, and just sort of share um, my vision for tonight. Now, I talked a little bit about it before, but um, we don't, in the church, especially in student ministry, and when I say in the church, I mean in general, we don't do a really good job of doing things all together. Uh, meaning students and parents. Uh, we live in a culture today where the world wants to tell you that as a parent that you need to give your teenager space, that you don't need to give in their business, they, they need their privacy. And then for students, for teens, the world tells you you don't need your parents anymore. They're old. They don't know what you're dealing with. They don't know anything. Don't listen to them. And neither of those things biblically are true. Because, guys, even today, so I went, uh, some of you know this, some of you don't, I'm, I'm from South Carolina. Um, and it's funny, people always ask, how long of a drive is it? And I said, well, what do you mean? Am I driving by myself? Is it me and Jennifer? Or is it me and Jennifer and two little boys? Because all three of those driving times are different. It also depends on who's in the driver's seat, which this time it was me the whole way there and the whole way back. But for us, if it was just us going, it'd be about seven and a half, seven hours and 45 minutes. With the boys, it's over nine. Because obviously, if you're a parent, what ends up happening? So you stop, you eat, you use the bathroom, you get on the road, you're on the road 15 minutes, what happens? I gotta pee! So, you know, you pull off again, you have to figure it out, and you're always like, just hold! South Carolina, uh, but it was a different trip for us this year because um, my mom sold our family farm. That's the, the only place that, that I've ever known. It's the only house that my family has ever been all together in. Uh, my mom and dad built, uh, we live in a, it's a two-story log cabin that my mom and dad built. Uh, they started right before I was born and, and finished about six months at when I was six months old. So, uh, so when we went home this time, it was really to hang out with my mom and be able to, to, to celebrate and grieve the, you know, the, the passing away of our family home. Uh, because we've gone all different directions. My, my brother lives on the coast of South Carolina. My sister lives in Atlanta. Uh, I live here uh, in southeast Alabama. So, um, but even today, like, I still, I still need my mom, and she still needs me, and, and there's still that relationship going on, and that's even today for you. So, I um, wanted to share just a little bit of scripture with you tonight. So, if you've got your Bibles, if you have your phones, go to Ephesians chapter 6. Um, and it's a, great, it's a great passage, and I want to I say this. So, it, it says the first word is fathers. And, and I believe that in this passage, because if you, if you know the Bible, it, the, the first thing it says that the, the dad, the father, the husband is the spiritual leader of the house. But when it says fathers here, it's not just saying just dads. It's also saying the parental group. 
It says, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. You know, guys, when it says that, it says, parents, don't provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in discipline and instruction of the Lord. That's not always an easy thing to do. I have a child. How many of y'all have met Henry? Henry is different. Um, Henry is one of the most unique children I have ever met, and I've been in student ministry for 16 years. Um, Henry is also one of the most frustrating children I have ever met in 16 years. Jennifer's over there nodding her head. Um, but for things that need to be done in a way that honors Christ and bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. For you parents, and I'm going to speak to the students in just a minute, for you parents, discipline and instruct your children. But what do they not want? They don't want discipline and instruction. And I know that that is a very difficult task. And I know that's not just in the teenagers. It's also is when they're children, when they're four, five, six, seven, eight years old. Uh, I have another child, Caleb. How many of y'all met Caleb? If you've seen Caleb, he was probably either standing still, holding a fuzzy, or running. Uh, there's not really any other thing that he does. Um, he's the one, he's the discipline part for us, man. He's always, you'll say, Caleb, get dressed. No, I not do that. They just look you in the face and say, no, I'm not doing it. He said, do you want to spank him? Sure. I t- he told me that this morning. I said, are you going to put your pants on? Nope. I said, why not? Don't want to. I said, it's cold outside. I don't care. You going to wear a jacket? Nope. You want to spank him? Sure. He actually said, sure. I don't think I've ever heard my three-year-old say sure before. And I'm, you're just struggling with that. But you know, guys, it's a process because the ultimate goal for us is to be able to launch our children into adulthood, to launch them out, to not just be successful in the world's eyes, but also be successful spiritually, to have for our homes to be a home where we teach Jesus, where we reinforce Jesus on the good and easy days and on the hard and bad days to do that. Now, for all the teenagers in the room, guys, let me tell you this. You don't like to be instructed and to be disciplined. I know. I was a teenager once. But you know what? Regardless of what you think, God has given your parents that duty. And it's not always comfortable for you. And it's not always easy for you. But there's a learning curve and there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a learning process that goes on between parents and, 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 and children. And, you know, eventually you'll both get it figured out. But it is a process. This isn't something that's going to happen overnight. And that's where we as the church want to help. Now, it is not our duty to, to disciple and teach and instruct and discipline your children. We come alongside to help with that. We want to give you resources to do that. We want to be a helpmeet in doing that. And so that's what we are as the student ministry at First Baptist Church of Enterprise. We want to be a helpmeet to you parents and a helpmeet to you students to make that relationship that's talked about in Ephesians 6, 4, to make that relationship be fruitful, to be one that, that as much as we can to be as painless and as, and, and as, as effortless as possible. Now, we know that's not always going to be the case, but that's our goal. And that's not just my goal, because, yes, I am a student pastor here, but that's our staff's goal in all of our different areas. That's Catherine's goal with the children. You know, that's been in Caleb's goal just, over, you know, with, with adults and overall as the pastor of the church. You know, that's what we want to see is we as a church want to come alongside you and give you the tools to carry that out. So that's, that's sort of our vision, really, for what this night is all about, because we wanted to get all of you together in one room to worship together and then to talk about what our student ministry is going to be doing. One, so that we're all on the same page, but two, man, it's just so you can hang out and enjoy fellowship and enjoy worship together. Because there is, 
there is a great benefit to corporate worship, especially corporate worship happening between students and their parents. So without further ado, um, there, we've got some stuff we're going to cover tonight. Um, I, will, I will say this. Yes, welcome to Parent Night. I will say this. So we normally would give you a release form that is good for the whole next year at our parent meeting. We are not doing that tonight, and I will explain why. <clears throat> our church's lawyer is reviewing all of our release forms uh, because there have been some cases where churches have been sued for various things, and he wants to make sure that we are covered with our current release forms. So it's part of the reason that we ask all the parents for your contact information so that we can update that, and that when we get that release form, especially for those of you that are parents of students going to extreme winter, that we can email and mail that to you so that you can fill it out then. So that's why there's no release form tonight. I know that was, I know that was a question, um, but that's why. So, uh, so did everybody get one of these? Everybody get one of these? Everybody get one? Hey, Connor, did you go grab, you and Lance, some of y'all go grab that stack. And even students, y'all need one of these. Y'all need one of these. Y'all need one of these. So, hey, and grab the winter extreme ones too, if you don't mind. Um, all right. You know, I have, a, I have an agenda, and all of a sudden it popped up, uh, it popped up with a recipe for, um, for, like, Dutch oven breakfast. I don't know where that came from. Um, parent ministry resources. So, so there is a website that you can go to that's got a growing library of parent ministry resources. It's stewmenguy.com. It's my, it's my personal website. We've hosted it all there. So there's, there's parenting classes on there. There's, um, there, are, there are family experiences. So each year that your student is in, is in student ministry, there's a different experience. So like a driving contract, you know, budgeting, uh, you know, bu a family budget form to help them go over that. So there's all of those. There's some helpful articles on there for you to read. Uh, I blog on there from time to time, just some of my thoughts and, and, and feelings and that kind of thing. So we want you to be aware of that, uh, to go there, to use it uh, as a resource for you. Um, and if you don't feel like writing everything down, um, we're going to post all of these slides um, on, on the Internet, on our website, and on the Facebook group, as well as we Facebook Live every Wednesday night. So the video of tonight will be available on our Facebook group so that you can go back and review uh, what you've seen. So, um, so StuMinGuy.com, all kinds of parenting resources in there. Uh, we add we add more every week or every couple of weeks, so you can be on the lookout and keep looking. Um, okay, so our, our weekly offering. So, you know, we get people that ask us these questions all the time. What do we do during the week? What does our week look like? So we have Sunday school up here at 915. Um, yes, sometimes we start close to 915. Um, uh, I can't say much. Ben's in the back of the room. Um, I really, like, I was struggling with putting 9.30. I'm just going to be honest. Like, I really struggled with doing that. I'm like, no, I'm going to put what it's supposed to be. So 9.15, Sunday school up here. Uh, Sunday school classrooms are back here. Hey, if you're a Sunday school teacher, uh, would you raise your hand or stand up? Yeah, we got to, there, there's some in the room. You, you were not. I don't care what you did. Um, Connor, Connor taught the 11th, 12th grade guy Sunday school class Sunday. Um, I didn't know that was happening. So, oh, um, so Sunday afternoons at four o'clock, we have small groups, community groups that meet uh, in people's homes around Enterprise. Uh, we have that for all age groups. We have a, a junior high guys group, a junior high girls group, high school guys group, and a high school girls group. Uh, they meet all over. Um, I know Adam and Tori are here. Y'all stand up. So Adam and Tori, high school girls. Um, I'm standing up. Uh, Crystal, where are you? Where's Crystal? She was here. Oh, she went downstairs. Um, Kyle Taylor and I meet at my house with high school guys. Um, Chris, the junior high girls meet at Crystal Taylor's house. Uh, Bailey, Cena, Molly Kate, where are you, Molly Kate? There you are. You raise your hand. 
uh, they leave the junior high girls, and then I left somebody out. Junior high guys, uh, DJ and Matt Windham, uh, neither of them could be here tonight, um, but they're at, they, they meet at um, Eagles Landing uh, Pool House uh, for their small group meeting. Uh, so we have those going on at 4 o'clock on Sundays. Every, um, just about every Sunday, uh, we post when we have them, when we don't have them. So if you're interested in doing that, uh, you can go to fpcenterprise.info, and I'll cover that in just a minute um, to find out more information. And then Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock, we're up here, um, 6 o'clock for worship. We open the hangar at 5 for hang time. Uh, we do food on the second and fourth Wednesday of every month. We changed that this school year because the second and fourth Wednesdays match up a lot better with our special events that we do, like the Halloween, the costume party, and the Christmas uh, ugly sweater party. Uh, they match up a lot better and with days off, so we do the second and fourth. <coughs> and somebody's like, man, we're supposed to have food tonight. No, it's the fifth Wednesday. Fifth. This is the fifth Wednesday. We don't do food on the fifth. So that's what we have going on weekly uh, here in the student ministry. Um, uh, it, it, so, hey, Carson, next slide. Um, so in January and February, we're starting a new sermon series. Um, so in January, we're going to be doing the sermon series, Me. Um, you can try and figure out what that's about. Um, and then in... February, we're going to be doing the sermon series, Us. If that's not self-explanatory, um, somebody's like, what do you mean, me? What are you going to be talking about? Um, so that's what we're going to be doing. Obviously, if you look at February and you look at the picture, you can sort of tell what we're going to be talking about. So we're going to be talking about you as a person in January, and then we're going to be talking about, about teenage relationships in February. Um, and not just, look, and, and there will be discussion, I just want to tell all the parents, there will be light discussion of, of sex, but there's not going to be anything deep. Uh, that is part of the discussion of relationships. Um, but we are going to, we're just going to be covering what it looks like, what it looks like to be, to be linked together in a godly re relationship with somebody of the opposite sex. Um, what does the Bible say about dating? What does the Bible say about thought life. With me, it's going to be, um, is it okay to be different? What does God say about you and your relationship with yourself and with him? Um, what about, you know, what do you think about yourself? So that's sort of what we're going to be covering in January and February uh, up here. Um, Carson, go ahead and go to the next one. I know I'm off. My phone was off. So if you ever need to get in touch with me or with the student ministry office, uh, or with anything we have going on, that, that is, that's the way. Now, that number up there is my cell phone number. If you don't have my cell phone number, it's right there on the screen. Um, it's 864-634-6149. That's how you get in touch with me. That's my email address here at the church. Um, that is not Beth Smith's cell phone number. She would kill me if I gave out her cell phone number. Some of you have it anyway, and that's okay. Um, but... But that's my ministry assistant, Beth Smith. You can contact her here at the church. Um, if you have administrative questions, um, you can ask me. Some of you know what's probably going to happen. Beth will be the one calling you back. Um, she, that's what she does. Beth does a great job of being an, uh, administering what we do here. Um, you know, she handles money. Um, she handles signups and all that. So she's the go-to for that. Now, on social media, uh, we have Facebook group. You can go to uh, facebook.com slash groups slash FBC student ministry. That's our, uh, our Facebook group. We've got FBC hangar on Instagram. Um, and then two different websites. The first website's our student ministry website. The second website, fbcenterprise.info. That is our church's new central hub. So, and some of y'all know you sign up online for D-Now or, or for Extreme. So what we do is fbcenterprise.info. When you, when you enter that into your web address, it pops up. And there's a, a giant picture that says events and a giant picture that says groups. And if you want to find out where groups meet, you can click on the groups. And if you want to find out what events are going on, you can click on events. And so that's what, that's, that's all the Central Hub is, is about. Uh, we put our events up there. 
Uh, we'll be putting um, our upcoming events when uh, registration. Out, there will be online sign up and it will be on FBC Enterprise. Into the office or on a Wednesday night or a Sunday morning, sign up on paper. But we're, we're trying to move uh, to online sign ups as well because I know a lot of with a debit card or credit card. So you can do that on there. <coughs> my phone back up uh, upcoming events so yeah. so oh yes so Glenstone so no 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 it gets better it gets better go to the next picture Carson oh no it gets, it gets better. It gets better. Go to the last picture. <laughs> so that, that is the, that is, hey, time out, time out. That is the two-level heated indoor pool. That is, in my opinion, the best part, only two and a half blocks up the hill from the convention center. So there is no more walking miles down the road. So now, if you've gone extreme with us before, you know there's a pattern to these things. First year, we got a great hotel. Second year, horrid. Third year, great. Fourth year, last year, horrid. Awful. This year, this year. Best hotel ever, couldn't, well, and I say that, we haven't gone yet, but looking at the pictures, and, and call, I called them today and said, do you really have a two-story indoor pool? And she said, yes, sir, and I said, are you going to let extreme students swim in it? And she said, yes, sir, why wouldn't we? And I said, you never know. Oh, um, <laughs> I said the worst thing ever would be to tell the students, bring a swimsuit, and then they're like, no, you can't get in the pool. You can just look at it. Oh. Um, so, so, no, and if you doubt if I called them today, those of you that know me, I called them today and was like, do your rooms really look like the picture on there? Or was like, or like, did you make one room look really nice and all the rest of them are like horrible with no windows and like you're sleeping on just a piece of carpet on the floor? Um, and they said, no, they all look like that. And I went, they get like 4.7 stars online out of five. So, yes, I'm like, woo! Now, now, I will say this. The roller coaster ride of hotel quality, I'm not looking forward to next year. Because um, <laughs> I'm wondering how low that dip is going to get. So, um, but you never know. It does pay. I did talk to the people at Extreme, and they said, look, if you bring a bigger group, we put you in a better hotel. And I went, I'm bringing 200 people next year. Um, so... Here's the extreme info. Be here at the church at 4.30 that morning on the 27th. Somebody said, that's early. I know it's not. Gatlinburg is not close. So um, we are taking a charter bus, um, and I will update everybody on this. Shh. Everybody listen. So we, our church no longer has a 32-passenger bus. We don't have that big bus that breaks down everywhere we go. Um, we have sold, we've traded that bus in. We now have, we now have another 15 passengers. So we have two little buses that anybody can drive. You don't have to have a CDL. So we have two little buses now. So we're taking a charter bus, the two little buses, and Heather Mitchell will be driving as well. Um, currently, right now, right now, we have 88 people going to extreme. Um, there is the possibility after Friday... Those of you on the waiting list, we may be able to get spots for you because we have to pay, we have to pay the balance on Friday. So, you know, if you've got a friend that's that like, hey, you know, may go, like we'll be able to update you this weekend to tell you if we were able to get more spots. There's no guarantee. I can't tell you for certain that we're doing it, but that's where we are. So uh, we think that some spots may drop. 
People have asked, why haven't we had more spots open? Because Extreme is absolutely sold out. They cannot put a single other person in the conference center. That's the problem. It's not the hotel rooms. It's the conference center. The conference center is sold out. So if people drop spots when they pay their, their balance, then we may be able to get a few more. We don't know. We can take a few more people. Um, so, uh, da, 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 da. you know, we know it's a long bus ride. If you bring your, your, um, uh, your devices, iPads, phones, computers, I know there's people bring computers, that's on you. I will say this, though. If I hear... If I hear music that I don't like, somebody's like, I know you don't like country. You're right. I'll yank it out of your ears. Oh, um, <laughs> I really don't. People laugh at that. I, I really, I hate country. Like, and I grew up on a farm. Look, I grew up on a farm. The nearest Walmart was 20 miles from me. And like, I grew up out in the middle of nowhere. I don't like country. Um, so just, hey, be mindful of what you're putting in your head. I mean, I know we can't monitor what's coming through your earbuds fr from your phone to your head. Be mindful of that. Um, we can't monitor all the time what's going in your eyeballs. Be mindful of that. And you know, parents, if you've never really paid attention to what your kids are listening to or watching, I, I might do that. Um, so we're leaving at 430. Um, if you can pay uh, tonight, you can. Um, we'd, like, we'd like for everybody... To not, like, to not, like, I've told some people, hey, when do I have to pay by? Well, you, the day we leave. I'd really not like to not have to take money at 4.30 in the morning. Um, because then I have to walk in the office and remember to put it in the safe. So, we'd like you to pay as soon as you can. We know it's Christmas time. We know that. So, um, you know, if you've got issues, and I wanted to say this too. And this goes for any of our trips, all of our trips, everything we do. If you are having monetary issues for whatever reason, please, 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 please do not hesitate to come talk to me. Guys, I've been doing student ministry for 16 years. I can't tell you the number of people that have come and talked to me and said, hey, man, I just I need some help. I have a designated line item here at church that has over $4,000 in it. That is, it's called a youth assistance fund that I can use to assist students going on trips and being involved in activities. So parents, don't be embarrassed. Students, don't be embarrassed. If you need help, man, we don't want money to be the thing that keeps you from going and, and, and doing things with us. So, um, uh, you know, you do, so I will say this. We would prefer for you not to wear a two-piece. If you do wear a two-piece to the pool, you have to wear a dark cover-up shirt over it. And I know the girls are like, well, I don't know. look, I'll sick the female leaders on you. I'm not going to handle that. Um, I'm a guy. That's weird. So you got, uh, you got the schedule on the back, the chaperone's phone numbers, hotel info, charter bus info, so parents, all the info you need. If you have any questions, I'm not going to belabor the point on extreme. If you've got questions about it, come talk to me either tonight, afterwards, you can call or email me. Uh, we can answer your questions. Um, we will email you the release form. You will just need to bring that with you on the day of, or you can turn it into me or the office at Beth before we leave. Sorry we didn't have it ready tonight, but, you know, it is what it is. So, um, next. So if everybody, everybody have one of these, everybody get one of these, everybody get one of these. All right. So we tried to come up with something unique to, to show you what we're doing this year. And um, I think we did. I was really excited about it until Heather Mitchell pulled me aside earlier. Um, and she just like that, that hot air balloon up there, Heather took a knife to it and ripped a hole in it and it just crashed and burned. Oh, um, I know. You just like, you were. But I made a mistake, and it bothers me. Um, so, so we're going to go down this. So we have Winter Extreme, um, guys' road trip. So, you know, we normally do a guys' camping trip. Um, we normally do a guys' camping trip. We're not going to do that this year. So this is President's Day.
So that Monday is present. We're not going to tell you where we're going. Oh. However, 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 y'all got to think. I know, see, you're like, he's probably already changed it. <laughs> um, so here's the, um, uh, so, no, so we're not going, well, hey, I will say this. If you don't know, there is a whitewater rafting place in Columbus, Georgia, that if you go whitewater rafting, um, in January, February, March, they will issue you, free of charge, a wetsuit to wear when the water's that cold. And I asked the lady when the college students went rafting, I said, do you have wetsuits in my size? She started laughing and I went, that's not funny. Um, so guys, road trip, I know some of y'all are baseball, look. If, if baseball's got a game, we may look at other dates, but that we're going to go then. Um, I'm hoping y'all don't have a game that Monday. I'm hoping you don't have anything Sunday either, but you know, it is what it is. So, girls, luau, glamping. Um, I got the dates wrong. 14th and 15th of April, right? <laughs> 13th and 14th of April. Glamping. How many of y'all know what glamping is? Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. So what glamping is, is glamping is glamorous camping. Where we, the girl, say we, it's not me, I'm not staying. Um, all I do is cook. Uh, we, we come and we, we actually hang out in the hangar overnight. Um, we do, uh, so this year it's going to be a luau theme. Uh, last year we did a, we did a, a camping theme. This year it's going to be luau uh, we come in and hang out, have a great time, um, good food. I should know I cook it. Um, so that'll be the 13th and 14th of April. Uh, we did it on Good Friday last year. The reason we're not doing that this year is because y'all are out of school that whole week leading up to Good Friday, and you probably won't be in town uh, if you go somewhere. So we're going to do it on the 14th or 15th and hope you can make it. And I know some of y'all are mad because you're like, well, soccer or whatever, tennis, I'm sorry. Like, we can't, we try, and, we try and do the best we can to schedule around everybody's schedule, but we got a lot of people in our student ministry. So, Graduate Sunday is May 20th. Uh, if you have a senior, <coughs> especially those that are pseudo-First Baptist people, like you Methobaptists, um, you know who you are. Um, so, so, if you... You will be getting information in the mail from the student ministry in late January, early February regarding Graduate Sunday. If you are not a member of First Baptist, but you are a member of the student ministry and you want to participate in Graduate Sunday, first I want to tell you it is open to you. Second, I want to tell you you need to come and let me know that as soon as you can so that we can make sure we do include you. Um, I've already had one family that's in that boat that they're not members of First Baptist, but they are. Their son is a member of, of our student ministry that he will be participating. So, um, and I, you know, I need to make sure of that. But, so if you do, if you're not a member of First Baptist, but you are a member of the student ministry, Graduate Sunday is open to you. So think about it. If you want to... You want to participate here. We don't want to pull you away from your church, but we do want you to do Graduate Sunday somewhere because that is a day to celebrate with your family. So, regional mission trip, May 29th. Um, second, I know I got it out of order. Don't, hey, just hold it there, guys, and I'll, I'll get to this in just a minute. Regional mission trip, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. I'm going to talk about both the mission trips at the same time. Um, June 22nd through 25th, we are going to Big Stuff Camp at PCB, it is only for junior high students. So if you have completed the sixth, seventh, or eighth grade, you can go. Some people are like, what about the high school students? Guys, y'all haven't been going to camp the last couple of years anyway. So that's why we're opening this up to junior high students. It is only, it is a four day weekend camp. So that's the great thing. For you chaperones, if you want to chaperone with us, it is just a four-day camp. 
So we're going to go down to PCB. We're going to do camp for four days, and then we're going to come back. So we'll be putting some more information out about this. Um, but this is going on. We wanted to go ahead and tell you so you can get it on your calendar. Uh, we would love for you to be able to go with us. We want to start doing more for just junior high students. And one of the things that we're going to start offering down in, in, that same, in that same vein is we're going to be offering a junior high only camp so it's just junior high students with us. Um, all right, last but not least, we want to cover our, uh, our mission trips that we're going to be doing uh, this coming year. We have two. The first one is we are going to Atlanta May 29th. great time um, I am going to go back I'm going back to the Islamic market because that's going to be Ramadan and I'm going to eat their meat again um, so now there's a slight there's a little bit of a change to what we're going to be doing this year we are not going to be doing whirlwind missions the whole time um, some of y'all know Tim's a little nut a little nuts a little crazy we're going to be doing some of the stuff with him, um, but we are partnering with we are partnering with a church plant in Atlanta. Ben, Ben, what's the name of the church plant again? What's the name of Jesus? Christ Covenant Buckhead. So we're going to go do two days helping them get ready for VBS and do and do announce and pass out and do some things for VBS, and then the rest of the week we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing some cultural things. We're going to be ministering to some people uh, that are not from the United States. We're going to be going and, and working in soup kitchens. So we're lining all that up now. But that's going to be the week of Memorial Day. It's a Tuesday through Saturday of Memorial Day. The second trip that we're going on is we're going to the Dominican Republic the week of July 4th. Now, a lot of people have asked if you got... The white packet that was out there, that's the Dominican Republic packet. Here's the catch. Somebody asked, why is it an 11th and 12th grade only trip? The reason that we said we really wanted to focus on 11th and 12th graders for this trip is because they will not allow people under 13 to go, period. If you're 14 or 15, you have to go with a parent. If you're 16, 17, or eight, 16, from 16 to the day you turn 18, you can go, but you have, it's one chaperone to five students. If you're over 18, you don't have to have a chaperone. So somebody, if parents, some of you have asked why we are not opening this up to other grades in our student ministry, that's why. It's not our rule. That's Compassion International. If you know, if you've ever been to a Christian concert and they said, hey, we want you to adopt these kids that are in other parts of the country, it's Compassion International, that's who we're partnering with. We're going to be doing a baseball clinic, we're going to be going and helping feed, um, uh, feed families that have babies that, prop, that, that, that would not survive without that help. We're going to be going and meeting with teenagers involved in Compassion's teenager program there, but we're going to be in the Dominican Republic. Um, for the, the third through the eighth, we'd love for you to go. Now, I've had other people ask, dude, it's $2,000. Yes, it is. But that includes everything except for your meals. And even includes some of your meals. That includes airfare. That's everything out the door. Now, we will help you. We're going to be doing fundraisers. Um, but here's the catch. We have to... For that $2,000 to not go up, we have to have at least 20 people go. And it doesn't have to just be 11th and 12th graders. Parents, if you want to go, if you know someone else in the church or someone else in the community that wants to go, if you know another student, friend of yours at school that wants to go, here's the only catch. If you're not a member of the church or a member of the student ministry, um, there are some steps you have to go through because we do want to make sure you actually believe in Jesus if we're taking you to a foreign country to share the gospel with people. Um, and I know that sounds harsh, but if you're not part of my student ministry, I don't know you. This is not a pleasure trip. 
This is not a sightseeing trip. Now, we are going to get to see cool stuff like we get to hang out in Santo Domingo, which is one of the oldest towns in the Western Hemisphere. Dude, I'm stoked because I love history. But that's just a small part of what we're going to be doing. Like, I'm excited about the baseball clinic because I want to see our guys get waxed. Um, I know, look at them, they're like, yeah. But you know what? Look, it's okay to get waxed if you get to share the gospel with kids that have never had anybody show any interest in them whatsoever. You know, you ever thought about that? You know, for all of y'all that are big-time competitors, and I'm one of them, have you ever thought about how awesome it would be for you to give up your competitiveness for one day and allow a seven- or eight-year-old kid that doesn't even have a baseball glove, a bat, or shoes to beat you at a game you love so that you are better able to share the gospel with them. I know, that's the thing. So yeah, one of them, some of the old guys were like, what are we going to teach people in the Dominican about baseball? And I'm like, I don't know. That was Compassion's idea. And I went, yeah, we got lots of baseball players. Let's do it. Yeah. So um, we want you to go. Parents, let me say this. If your 11th or 12th grader is going, there is nothing keeping you from going too. If they say, I don't want you there, just ignore them. Go anyway. We do need some chaperones. Um, there are some people that have already said, hey, we want to go. We're going. Y'all going? Yeah. So we've already got some people that have signed up. Sorry, man. I'm so sweaty. My mic's slipping off my ear. Um, so, so that's... That's what we're going to be doing. There's info packet out there. If you want to grab one, if you didn't grab one earlier, there's an info packet out on the welcome desk. Um, we would encourage you to do that, to grab it. If you have any questions about it, ask me. If I don't have the answer, I will get in touch with Compassion and find out the answer for you. So um, now this is the point. We got just like two minutes uh, and then we're going to close in prayer. But does anybody have any questions? I know it's been fast. It's been in a hurry. Um, I promise all the events that I've talked about tonight, all of those things, there will be more detailed information to come out about those in the future. But we wanted, shh, we wanted to put those out in front of you because I know it's the end of November and there's a lot of you planning your summer already. We wanted to get on your calendar before your calendar filled up. So if you've got any questions, I'm going to be up here hanging out afterwards. Um, there are no dumb questions. Uh, I promise, um, other than, uh, well, no, I'm not going to go there. Um, I had a student ask me one time, um, asked me, he said, uh, uh, he asked me, he said, hey, uh, Mr. Bryan? I said, yeah, yeah, what's up? And he said, uh, hey, I, I, I want to go on the trip. And I went, okay. He said, but I don't have any money. I said, well, that's not a problem, man. We can take care of you. And, um, and he, said, uh, he said, I don't think my mom and dad will let me go. And I went, that's a little bit of a problem. He said, I don't believe in Jesus either. He said, how am I going to tell people about Jesus in New Mexico? And I went, yeah, I don't think you can go on the trip, bud. Um, and he went, yeah, I probably need to know who Jesus is in my life first before I go and tell people about him. And I went, probably so, probably so. So to close some prayer and to say just a few things, Ben, uh, let's give it up for Ben Bowden, our pastor. Hey, that's your, hey, yeah. that was your cue to walk up here. <laughs> You well, thank you. When I heard my name, I thought, oh, my goodness, am I in trouble right here. But uh, you don't need to give up for me. I tell you who you need to give up for, and that is Brian Barino. Working so hard, putting this together. Good job, brother. I tell you what, we are so blessed here at First Baptist Enterprise. We are so blessed to have a healthy uh, youth pastor and a healthy youth ministry and I'm so thankful for his leadership and uh, you know what this man right here does he loves these guys out here and and what I love about um, what I love about Brian is that he he's so dialed in and he's so he cares so much but it's not merely about you teenagers 
It's about the families. You see, we, we really believe, and, and our whole staff is on, uh, uh, on board with this, and this is, this is our, not only our vision, but the philosophy that drives how we put together uh, the scheme of our ministries, and that is that we are equipping families to do the work of ministry. We talked about this this past Sunday evening when we were talking about the 2020 vision. You know, every one of you parents, one day, We'll stand before the Lord, and this God, God Almighty, is going to say, okay, I gave you these blessings, the greatest blessings that you can imagine, these children, and also gave you with them the greatest opportunity to imagine, because you live in a place where we have resources that are absolutely unlimited in terms of theological knowledge and, and getting into Bible studies and, and getting into the Word. So the question then comes, what did you do with that? Now, I don't know if it's going to be asked in that frame, but, but to some extent, we know, we know that the Lord tells us to much is given, much is required. And ultimately, I, as soon as I walked in, Brian was talking about this. Ultimately, my job and his job is not to do uh, all of the discipleship in your uh, student's life, in your child's life. But that is ultimately, uh, the, the responsibility rests on you, on the parents, and ultimately the, the men, the, the dads. That's who's going to be held ultimately accountable. And I feel the weight of this. I feel it six times over the, the weight of this. But uh, yeah, If you don't know, they're having another one. <laughs> yeah, so, so there you go. And in, uh, in just a few years, I'm going to be looking from 7th grade to 12th grade I think we're going to have six in, in from seventh grade to twelfth grade. But uh, anyway, but they are blessings. And, uh, and what I see here, too, in the faces of and, uh, you students, look at me real quick. Look at me right here, you students. You know what I see when I, when I look at you guys? I see a few things. First of all, I kind of see myself. Because in the summer of 1998, I was... Uh, what would you say, a Methobaptist? Methobaptist. So, so if, if, I don't know if we got Methobaptists out there. Tonight. We do. Well, uh, well I was I, right, I was hey, right I, there with you. I can tell you right now, there's three, because I, I, I know there's two that aren't here tonight. There's three of you in the room. <laughs> well, I can tell you, I was one of you. So I got nothing but love wherever you are. I got nothing but love for you because I was right there with you. But it was, um, but, uh, but I... I thought I was a Christian because, you know, I went to church, kept my nose clean, and, and tried to be a morally decent person. I tried. But I really did not know Christ. I didn't know the grace of God. I didn't know the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that wasn't because of a particular church I went to. It was because I didn't have ears to hear, but by, by God's grace. And in his sovereign, beautiful mercy, I was invited to this very church, First Baptist Enterprise. And week in and week out, pastors at the time, but he came, showed up. He was a he was a guy. Uh, moved on my heart, opened the eyes of my heart. The scales. Fell. Deep need for Jesus. The deep need for God's grace in my life, and He changed me. He saved me. He redeemed me. And by His grace, He continues to use me in spite of myself, in spite of my own sinfulness that's still there, the indwelling sin and uh, my, my own hardened heart. And I say this because, you know, I look at you, and Psalm 127 says that children are like arrows that we shoot out into the world so that you can make a splash for the kingdom of Christ. Every one of you, every one of you have the opportunity right now to make a dent for the kingdom of Christ or you have the opportunity to do the reverse. So the question is, well, how are you going to use your time now to make a splash for the kingdom of Christ and to prepare yourself for, for 10 years, 20 years down the road to make the biggest splash for the kingdom of Christ you can? Because you're going to blink your eyes and you're going to be my age, blink your eyes again, and you're going to be standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with eternity. So the question is, what are you doing now to make the biggest splash for the kingdom of Christ? Redeem this time. Use this time. Don't waste this time. Don't waste it. Don't waste it. So with that said, uh, I, I'll just close in prayer. And I encourage you to, 
be, be all in in your, in your local church. Be all in. Be all in. So you see all these things. Move heaven and earth so you can be a part of these things. Go on a mission trip. Go on the you know, Atlanta, Dominican Republic. These kind of trips at an early age are what molded and shaped my heart to, to see not only uh, an American gospel, but also a global gospel that God is doing amazing things throughout the world. And he can use you to make a splash. That really has ripple effects throughout all the nations. Let's pray. Father, thank you for these parents. Thank you for these students. God, I thank you for uh, the fact that you are moving every one of them, uh, that, that you, they're here tonight to, to see and to experience and to know more and more about what it is that First Baptist Enterprise uh, Student Ministry is doing. And I'm so thankful for Brian and for Jennifer and their family. Pray for the Barano family. Continue to protect them and bless them as they continue to lead. And I'm thankful that the student ministry here is not just a silo ministry, but, but they're, they're not only a part, but they're a, they're a vital part of what we're doing at First Baptist Enterprise. And I pray for, for heightened integration of, of different generations. We've got such, uh, we've got such potential here, uh, such talent, such giftedness here with these students that truly could bless older generations. And I know older generations bless younger so, God, I pray for the, uh, the parent-child relationships that are represented in this room. God, I pray for the marriages of the, the parents of these students. That the husbands would love their wives as Christ loved the church. And, their ch- and, and these wives would submit to their husbands as unto the <coughs> Lord. Just as, ch- as the church does to Christ. And I pray for the future of these students that even now you may set their hearts on fire for Christ, that they may have this huge vision for their lives, that they truly can make a splash for the kingdom of Christ, that they would see that, they would, they would understand that, and they would eat that up. As we pray all this in the powerful name of Jesus, amen. Good job, man. Thanks, man. Good presentation. Thank you. <laughs> They're all out there on the deck.